Hey there, Dave here. Um, I was putting together some pictures um, of um, a shoot I did a couple months ago with some models and a couple of other photographers. We rented a studio space, got together a bunch of flowers and things, and tried to just do something for ourselves. And you know what? It was a lot of fun. Um, now I'm getting around to editing some of those, and it's, it's not as easy as I thought. I am not really a good person editor or a portrait editor. I'm not even really that good a portrait photographer, let's be honest. Um, but it is something I like to do and it's something I enjoy. Anyway, as I was putting these things together, I started playing with them and seeing that there was a lot of things that I was doing that I had learned in real estate photography. And I thought these would be, I don't know, kind of an interesting thing to point out you know, and let, let you know that, you know, it's, it's not always about what you shoot. It's about how you put it all together and how you think about images. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how I edited these portraits and it had nothing at all to do with real estate or architectural photography, but the concepts do. Uh, and these concepts will go through all kinds of different photographies. So even though this is not the sort of photography I'm known for or what you think of me for, um, I think the concepts here are very valid and worth looking at and thinking about. Um, and I think hopefully it'll also be a lot of fun. So let's take a look and uh, put some images together and see what we come up with. All right, here we are. I was looking through some of these. I like that. I just, I like the dreamy aspect of this and all, so, but I, I really like this one. So I think we're going to start with this one. Um, as you can see, it's exposed very much to the left. Um, kind of with the Z2, it does underexpose a little bit more than my Z6. Did I say Z2? Z7 seems to un un underexpose from, from what I'm used to with my Z6, which is what I use the most. So um, I'm still able to pull something out of this. And also I want darker images, so I'm not too worried about it. So I'm going to start here with this and just get up to what I think looks like a nighttime level. Um, I think our colors are all balanced. Everything else is really good. I'm really happy with this. So we're just going to go with that as our base image. And I'm going to mark it with green so I can tell it from all these other images because trust me, I mean, we're, we're at image 709 and I think we're about halfway through this timeline. So there's a lot of images. So anyway, there's that. Now here's where I think I'm going to start getting a little crazy from a, what a lot of you are used to. Um, you know, especially in real estate, we'll use multiple exposures that are over and underexposed and all that, and we shoot brackets and do that. Kind of hard to do that with a person. So let's just take the same image and um, create a virtual copy. And um, I want this at the same level, but I want this bluer right around in there. So I've got that kind of moonlight sort of feel to it, right? And then I go back to the original image and now I'm gonna want it overexposed just a teeny bit. I want that face to just pop and see everything else in the whole image is just a little too bright, but that's okay. I'm just looking at the face just looking at that and making sure that that looks exactly what I want. Okay, so, oh shoot, I didn't make a virtual copy. I need to make a virtual copy. That's what I want there. And then let's take this back to that lower exposure that I like, the, the moonlit. So I've got um, an underexposed but pretty good image overexposed for the face and then underexposed with a blue tint. I'm going to take all three of those and pop those into um, Photoshop. <clears throat> all right, so on top I have my regular exposure. There's my overexposure on the second level and all the way down I have the blue level. So we're going to start with that blue level. Um, and then um, we're going to put the highest exposure on top and put a black filter on that. And then this one, um, we're going to let, I'm, I'm really lazy. I'm just going to let 
Photoshop, select the subject, because that's what I want to be in this color balance. And that works pretty dang good. Um, so I'm just going to click there, hit make a mask, and there we go. Now we've got her over sort of a, a blue background. Um, so now I look at this image and I see where the problems are. And there's one right there. It didn't catch that. So that's really easy. We just put in a little bit of a black mask and get, get some blue in there. And we don't have to be perfect. We just have to make sure it doesn't stand out. That's all. Um, all right, that's looking pretty good. Now let me see what happens if I take this down just a little bit, just to add a little bit of blue into her. Um, you know, I still want that night feeling. There we go. I think that looks pretty good. That's um, 71%. The percent, set the percent by eye. Don't set it by anything that I do. Um, here in the studio, as you can see down here, we have um, a rubber band and the studio floor, and I don't want that. So I have a separate image right here that I shot and adjusted that works well in this color palette. And I am just going to copy that, duplicate layer, and I'm gonna duplicate into that image. And, um, I'm going to put it between the blue and the, the white uh, regular layer and I'm going to turn it off and then I'm going to come in here and I'm going to make a very 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 sloppy select so I'm just going to start here and just you know this doesn't have to be good it just has to be quick and we just we've got so much dark here that a lot of things will hide in here so you know it just the, the thing you most don't want, if that's such a word, is straight lines. There's nothing straight in um, nature. So keep your lines moving. Try and keep angles fairly not sharp. And just, you know, just mess around. We are going to clean this up a little bit later, but um, I just want you to get the feel that we don't have to is perfect um, and it's not going to be perfect I don't really care and I just cut through here and there that's all we need so go like that and then I'll just hit make a mask and there we go now we've got some ground in front of her and it looks a little bit more natural and better than that stupid um, cement so now come in here Go onto the mask layer and let's just massage with some black those lines and just make that all disappear, make that all blend. And um, you'll be surprised how easily, quickly, and invisibly this all goes together. You may be seeing a mistake coming up. Don't worry, I will get it. Ooh, what happened there? Oh, I know what happened. I, I'm going black, so I hit Control Z to back out of that. Um, let's go white there. Yeah, that's what I need to do. Go white here. And this is the blue tarp that was on the ground there. And um, I don't like that much either. So I'm just going to paint that in. And again, Sloppy doesn't matter because nobody's going to see this. Nobody's going to be looking at this. All eyes should be on that woman. And as you can see, you know, this matches pretty well in there. So get that blue gone. Little holes of blue. Get those straight lines gone. You know, part of the trick here is to pick. You know, when you, especially, gosh, you know, when you're picking your um, skies that you're putting in on, um, you know, your fake sunset shots, you know, you got to match the sky or the, 
the, the subject to the what you're compositing in. So many, and I'm going to be really critical here. So many, especially beginners, they just they find this massively cool looking sky, and it doesn't at all match the house they're putting in, um, lighting wise. And that that's it, it's not how good or bad you make your mat lines. It's how close your um, your composite image matches your original image. If they're not in the same light tone, they're not going to match at all. <coughs> Excuse me. This is sort of the same light tone, so it matches really well, and you're not really seeing the line. So victory there. All right, so now we've still got this overexposed top layer, and all I'm going to do here is bring in her face. So I go onto the matte layer using white, and I just bring in her face like that. And we just get that angelic looking um, glow on her face. Um, and I'm, this is supposed to be more of a top down lit thing. So I'm going to put a little bit more on the top, make that a little smaller and go right on the top here and right on the top here. And, um, then especially that finger because I want that finger to show. That's kind of what this shot is all about. I'll take a little bit of that out. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and use white to bring in all the flowers. Just This just takes a second. You just hit them and it, it'll make them pop a little bit. You can do this with, you know, things, chairs, whatever you want to pop in your real estate pictures too, you know, it's just where you want the attention to go. Attention in the viewer goes to things that are lit. So just bring in some light like that. And um, all right, let's take a look at that. All right, I think this way up here looks horrible all by itself, so I'm going to back that out. I would probably, um, yeah, that's that's fine. I may take that completely out of the picture because it draws the eye up there. I don't like that. Um, once I do that, I always tend to back that level off just a teeny bit to make it just work a little bit more natural. Your eye always seems to, when you're doing something fresh, like to see the over-exaggerated version of something, and it's never good. Always do your effect, then back it off. Um, here's another fun little trick. We're going to just add a new layer. We're going to add a curves layer, and we're going to bring up the exposure a whole lot like that. And that looks just horrible, doesn't it? That's fine. Now we click on that um, mask on it, and we hit uh, Command-I or Control-I if you're a PC, and um, take it all the way out. Now we're just going to blend in just a little bit on her hair. And hair, especially dark hair, doesn't show very well. So we'll just bring in, you know, it's kind of like dodging and burning. This is my version of dodging and burning. I'm just going to, nope, I don't like that. Take that out. Let's bring in some hair there. And a little bit right there. There we go. Um, yeah, I think that looks really good. So let's take a look at that. Um, so all we did was bring in her hair. And look at that. Look how much more it pops that. And again, bring it down just a teeny bit. I'll usually use that also to bring out the eyes. If the eyes are open here, they're not, obviously. So we're not going to do that. But, you know, whatever. Um, so we've got a pretty good-looking base image. I think that's annoying. Um, let's see. This is the important part. Start looking around. Start seeing where your eye goes. Start judging your picture. Look for those highlights that distract. Look for anything that distracts. To me, this rose is horrible. I think that's 
extremely poorly positioned. Um, so let's get rid of that. So at this point, we've got all these layers. Um, I have a shortcut key F3 that puts it all onto one layer. So now I can adjust that. I'm just going to go for this little um, clone brush or whatever. What, what is that thing called? Uh, spot healing. Yeah, let's take out some of these bright spots. And, you know, again, just be messy. It's going to... Nobody's going to be looking at this. I don't like that. I don't like that. I don't like that. I don't like that. I don't like this coming out from there. Um, yeah, I talked about it. I think I'm just going to completely take that rose out. I don't want anybody's eye going up there. It'll probably be cropped out in the end anyway. I look at my edges too and make sure there's nothing distracting going off the edge. Um, see this right there? That goes off the edge. That's not good. Um, that kind of is annoying. That, that. Yeah, clean up those edges so that the edges are nice and dark and they're not pulling you away from your image. It's boring, sorry. Has to be done. Okay, there we go. That looks pretty good. <sighs> okay, so what are we going to do next? Oh, let's get rid of that rose. Um, I swear, Photoshop is so darn smart these days. Um, okay, I see some blue here. Um, I am going... I don't like that blue line. That's from when we did the select... Um, subject. So let's bring the subject back up on top. Delete the layer mask. No, I don't. I want to delete the layer mask. Delete layer mask. There we go. And now we're going to go completely black. And now I'm just going to smudge in a little bit just to make this a little bit more even and, and look a little, the colors look a little bit more right. kind of see a line there and I'm gonna take this out where it got too yellow there yeah. just always be looking and, and th fixing things there we go I think that looks a lot better now I have to hit uh, my F3 again to make a new layer because I need everything all on one layer for this next step so I'm gonna take and select this rose coming around starting right there I try and select it as close as I can um, because I, I don't want to be making up more image than I really need to be. And I don't expect this to be a perfect um, fix either. But I do, I am lazy enough that I think this gets it close. So we'll just hit that and content to wear fill. And yeah, I want it filled from her dress. There we go. Dang, that looks pretty dang good. Um, so let's all onto one layer. Select, deselect. And then let's start fixing the problems here. That seam doesn't work. That seam doesn't work. So just take those out. I still don't like that line, so let's take that out. And then I'm going to use the clone brush and start taking some of this seam from way up here and adding it down here so that it continues that, that same idea. And then I think I can take some of this here and make that match a little better. And um, yeah, no more rows and it looks natural. Okay, so we basically, we've got the basic image put together now. Now we do some editing tricks. I love Nick, I use Nick a lot. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go into Nick. And um, all I'm going to do is dynamic skin softener. Um, Nick 5 now has this opacity thing, which is really nice. So you can take the opacity down. But I'm used to the old versions that didn't have that. Um, so I'm going to create a layer. And the last thing I want to do is have somebody look plastic. So. I use this just to even out their skin tones and then I come in and I look at that and I go okay way too plastic 
but I can come in here now since I've got um, a layer beneath it with no adjustment and I can bring that down a little bit and get that right to where I want it. Um, I think eyes are really important too. Let's go to F3. I like to just grab the little sharpen brush and just do a little sharpen on eyelashes and lips because that's where people look. And so I think just a touch of added there and maybe on this finger because that's kind of the point of this picture. All right, so we've got that. Um, all right, so we'll go back into Nick and um, this is kind of my typical finish. I will do a light and dark in center, um, put the center right on her face, make the center size fairly small, and then um, you can adjust your lighting to really make it just pop. Um, and um, Pro Contrast is another one I really, really like because I can get that contrast in right where I want it. I usually go a little darker in light and dark and center, and then this will bring out a little bit more. And then my final real trick is I throw in Skylight Filter, which is way too yellow. But this I do use the opacity on, and I just bring it down a little bit to where things make me feel good. And there we are. And that's pretty much, to me, a finished image. I think, like I said, the cool thing here is just realizing, having a roadmap in your mind, you know, shooting and knowing what you're going to use to fix different things. And when you don't have other layers to fix different layers, you fix them by making the same layer and making copies of it and fixing it in those layers and putting them all together. Um, I think that's a really important part of editing that a lot of people overlook. Um, you know, this I'm going to crop now, and um, but I think you know when we look at this versus let's go all the way down to what the original image looked like. Okay, so that's essentially what our first shot was, and this is where we got it to. Um, you know, you, you might make different editing choices than me. You might like it more yellow. You might like it more blue. Um, this is kind of the feel that I want. I want to um, uh, sort of um, moonlit sort of thing. And again, that's light coming from on top. Now that I look at it, I think I like it a little darker right in here. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to add a new curves layer on top of everything. This is a cool thing too. You can use this and you can grab a specific area and bring that down. And um, that way you're affecting the part that you want to affect the most. Now I'll hit Command I to invert that. So we've effectively taken that off. And now I'll slowly paint in that shadow on her lower side. that and we're not affecting color or anything we're just affecting um, the light there we go and I think that that gives us more of the light from above that that feel let's take that down a little bit take these down a little bit behind her again it's just simply um, you know crashing and burning <laughs> um, uh, what do you call that not crashing and burning um, dodge and burn yes that's what it is and let's see what, what that did see that just I think just brought that in a little bit more so I think that's it I think that's our final image um, I do hope she likes it I am really bad I don't remember the model's name um, lighting wise this was lit from above with alien bees in a probably a six foot soft box um, and then I had some V flats around to pop a little bit light in from the sides
Um, but uh, that's that's kind of the look I wanted with this, and I I, I hope I hope you like it, and I hope you um, maybe learn something from this. So, thank you very much for watching.